Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church amen amen well, i'd like to welcome everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is will ye also go away will ye also go away that's a question how many know where that question came from came from the Bible. Jesus asked that question. He asked that question, will ye also go away? What if Jesus came down here right now and asked you that question, will ye also go away? What would you tell him? The know-it-all spirit cannot stay in the presence of God. <laughs> the know-it-all spirit cannot stay in the presence of God. Has anyone ever experienced a know-it-all spirit? Amen. That person knows everything. Even when they're wrong and you know that they don't know, it's like the gig is never up. They're still so proud that they just will not confess and admit that they didn't know. I've came into contact with that spirit. I don't know what to say. The know-it-all spirit cannot stay in the presence of God. Why? Because the know-it-all spirit feels like they know more than God. They know more than anyone else who ever walked the planet of earth. They knew more than Jesus. They knew more than God. They just know everything. How many you know the devil, Lucifer, had a know-it-all spirit? I want you to understand that Lucifer had a know-it-all spirit. He thought that he knew more than God. That's why he wanted to make himself like the Most High God before he got ostracized from heaven. Before he got booted out like lightning. The know-it-all spirit cannot stay in the presence of God. So the question is, will you go away? Will you also go away? Look at how the know-it-all spirit treated treated Jesus. Matthew 13, 54. It says, And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. So Jesus is teaching just the way I'm teaching right now. Synagogue was, is like a church right now. So it says they taught in the... Uh, Jesus came into his own country and he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said... So in other words, Jesus taught in a way where they were impressed. Astonished means that they were impressed. But here's the question. What were they impressed about? Because if they enjoyed his preaching so much, did they act the way that they acted? Let's see. It says they were astonished and said... Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the mother called Mary? Is not his brother James? Is not uh, uh, Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Weren't they not all with us? See, they knew everything. They knew who Jesus was. They knew who his dad was, his mom, his son, sons, his cousins. He didn't have no sons. His brothers, cousins, nephews, nieces. They knew everything about him. He was a carpenter. He was five foot six, you know, black, white, whatever. They knew it all. They knew what he ate for breakfast before he came. They knew everything. Right? And look at what it says. It says his sisters, were they not all with us? Whence then had this man... All these things. In other words, who does he think he is? And where does he think he came from? That he has the audacity to come in our synagogue and try to teach us anything. That was the attitude that they had. And it was not long before they left Jesus. Why did they leave him? Because they knew it all. Now here's the question. There's no way I'm ever going to preach as anointed as Christ. 
There's no way I'm ever going to be as gifted or talented or powerful. And my sermons will never come close to Jesus Christ. Amen. And if they had a know-it-all spirit with Jesus, <laughs> imagine what I'm in for. <laughs> Jesus who created the sun, right. the moon, the earth, man, animal. He created everything. But yet they know it all. We need to be in the Holy Spirit so our flesh is not offended by God's Word. Now I like how God did me. I'm going to say this one more time. We need to be in the Holy Spirit so our flesh is not offended by God's Word. I remember before I was a Christian, I remember my flesh was so offended by anything to do with God, with church, even things that were not of God that I thought were of God offended me. Because I didn't have enough understanding what was of God and what was not of God, but if I even thought it was of God, it offended me. Why? Because I was in the flesh. And not only was I in the flesh, I believe I had demons as well. And I remember there was a time where my granny, I called her granny, she, she would talk to me for hours and hours and hours and I had no problem. We could talk about everything. Crab legs and steak and chicken. and We could talk about all kinds of stuff for hours, no problem. But the millisecond, the microsecond, my granny mentioned going to church. Oh, no. and she would, I think she would strategically save that towards the end of the conversation. And she would mention, oh, you should go to church. It would be good for you. When are you going to go to church? And as soon as she would say that, immediately, I was so offended, I had to get rid of her. And I would say, I love you. you got to go. Bye. Click. And that would be the end of the conversation. How many times did I do that? I did that every time. Wow. How many times did I do it? I did it all the time. Why? Because my flesh was not in the Holy Spirit. It could not tolerate the Bible says no flesh will glory in the presence of God. The Bible says no man has seen God face to face and lived. Why? Because our flesh cannot contain the glory of God. And if we are in the flesh and not out of the flesh, and if we are in the flesh and not in the spirit, we cannot stay. We will run as far as our two feet will allow us to run away from the word of God. Amen. I've seen it happen. I've seen, I've seen sincere people that were in the flesh and still sincere. And meanwhile, I've seen them try to come to church. I've seen them trouble themselves, drive far and come to church, sit in the church. But when the word of God started going forth, they got up like a bottle rocket and ran for the door as fast as they could. I've seen it with family members. I've invited family members to church. And when the Holy Spirit broke out, so did they. <laughs> will you also go away John 6 60 many therefore of his disciples when they heard this so this isn't just anybody it wasn't just like a random person walking down the street this is talking about his disciples, people that Jesus was working with, people that Jesus was teaching. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said to them, does this offend you? Does it offend you? He said, what? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascended up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. And this is a question. Is it the Spirit that quickeneth? 
The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So if we are not in the spirit of God, then we cannot tolerate the word of God. The word of God is spirit and is not designed for flesh, but it is strictly designed for our spirit. And that's why when we are born again and we are babes in Christ, our spirit person craves the Word of God. We desperately thirst after it, just like a baby desires milk. That's right. You don't have to bribe the baby <laughs> to drink milk. You don't have to present it in a fancy way. <laughs> You don't have to present it in a red bottle or a blue bottle or a short bottle or a small. You present the milk to the baby. The, the baby does not discriminate. It drinks the milk. Why? Because he, the baby intrinsically knows. It's built. It's designed. It's programmed by God for a baby to know that it needs milk. The same way it is for a brand new born again Christian. We just simply know we need the word of God. I don't have to bribe you with coffee. I don't have to bribe you with cookies and candy and, and, and turn this place into Chuck E. Cheese and a fun house. All I have to do is simply share the Word of God. And if you are a born-again believer, you will sign up for it. Amen. You will be on board. Amen. Amen. I'm to celebrate Halloween and to sell Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and, and, and be just like the world. No, I don't have to sell alcohol. I'm not a bartender, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Will you also go away? Will you also go away? Look at this right here. We need to be in the Holy Spirit so our flesh is not offended by God's Word. Look, Jesus spoke in a way where it convicted people. He preached in a way where folks were convicted. You know, there are a lot of Christians right now that they say, well, if your church is preaching in a way that makes people aware of their sin or, or speaks in a way that's convicting, oh, that's pulpit bashing. <laughs> pulpit bashing. You're bashing from the pulpit. That's awesome. Bashing. <laughs> bashing. That's what they'll say. Oh, he's a pulpit basher. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be bashed when I come to church. Well, what's going to be bashed? Your pride, your ego, your sin, those demons. What's bashed? What? How much can you possibly do with words from the Bible? Wow. But the flesh is offended. Look, it don't matter. As Christians, it don't matter what you do. You can walk down the street with like Tourette's and talk about Jesus. Jesus. People are offended. Why? Because the flesh don't like it. People will fall away looking for signs rather than the truth in God's Word. Amen. Now, there are a lot of people that are looking for signs. Oh, count your lucky stars. Well, look, this ain't Lucky Charms, and I'm not counting no lucky stars. In fact, I don't believe in luck. That's right. Amen. I don't believe in the word luck. Amen. In fact, I know there is no luck. There is God. Amen. Luck is a worldly, a pagan term to replace the reality of God. And therefore, I don't say good luck. In fact, if I get a card and I give it to one of you, I purposely will take my own time and I will scratch off that word luck and replace it with bless. Amen. But people are looking for luck. People are looking for signs. And they're looking for signs over the truth of God's word. That's right. exactly. So I don't care if someone comes in and walks through that door without opening it and hover, hovers over here and grows three heads right before me. I'm not looking for those type of signs anyways. The Bible says signs and wonders will follow them that believe. So not only are we not supposed to be looking for signs, signs should be following us. Amen. 
Not worth following signs. But people who don't have a true knowledge of Jesus, they're easily deceived by the enemy because they're looking for signs and not the truth of God's Word. Amen. See, the Lord blessed me the other day and my wife. And we were driving behind a uh, church that's for sale right on um, uh, uh, 4, 480, the freeway 480 and Broadview right there on the corner. I forget the name of what that church was. But I just drove by, just curious looking. I'm not interested at all. I'm just curious. right? And so me and my wife, we just happened to pull behind that parking lot and we see this guy, he looked like a homeless person. Right? We see this guy looking like a homeless person. I'm wondering, I'm like, what is this guy getting ready to shoot up heroin? And I'm parking back there. And my wife's like, look, come on, let's just go. I'm like, no, I want to see this. God, let me see this for a reason. I want to see this thing follow through. So this guy that looks like a homeless person or getting ready to shoot up heroin, one of the two. Now, I should even stereotype heroin users. because, But you know what? This guy didn't look right, okay? He, he looked like he was trying to not look right. Like purposely not look right. So I see this raggedy, ripped up jeans, like mud all on his face. He gets out of this brand new car. I'm talking about brand spanking new car. I'm like, this is interesting. So this guy, he's walking normal. I mean, he's walking tall and proud like Big John Stud, right? And then he's got this sign and he pulls out this sign that says, uh, we'll work for food or something like that. Right? And then I see him. He's just strutting across Broadview Road like no problem. And so I pull over because I want to see what this guy's up to. And then sure enough, as he's walking, magically, he gets into a back accident from the air. And as he's walking, he goes like this. And he just goes right into cripple mode. And I see this guy walking hunched back over. I'm like, that wind must have really hit him. And his back is all hunched over. He's got a sign. And he, his face starts changing to like this. <laughs> and he comes to the side of the freeway begging for bread. And I'm watching well-meaning, sincere Christians or good people, good-hearted people just drop money on this guy. I watch it. I'm watching them give this money. Not know, And the people that are giving him money, he's driving a nicer car than they are. Why? Because people are looking for signs. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven does not come with observation. Why? Because observation can easily deceive us and we should not be walking by sight. We should be walking by faith and being led by the Spirit of God so that we are not one of the folks that are deceived by the enemy. Because if you could be deceived by a man on the side of the road, then surely you could be deceived by the... Antichrist. Surely, Surely you could be, be deceived by the, by the Antichrist. Antichrist. Amen. Right. Okay. People will fall away looking for signs rather than the truth in God's Word. Amen. So I'm not looking for churches that have glitter falling from the ceiling <laughs> like they do in some churches. I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but you know who you are. I'm not looking for glitter falling from the ceiling. <laughs> or angel angel feathers falling from the Duckworth to say, oh, I was so anointed. Come to our church where feathers. You know what? Just come to me. I'll take a pocket full of feathers and throw it in your face. And then we'll get to the Word of God after you're done. After you're done. Can we get back to the Scriptures? Please. Please. <laughs> Amen. Rhetorical questions. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Look at this, folks. It says all power and signs and lying wonders. So look, God is going to allow the devil to have all power and signs. And lying wonders. Now, what about the folks that are only, they don't care about the Word of God? They just want to see spiritual goofy things. 
Look, go to a haunted house, get saved, and then come to the church after you're done seeing all the signs that you want to do. But people don't want the Word of God. They want to be entertained by Satan. Satan comes as an angel of light. It says, with all... That's an interesting word. With all deceivableness. I would, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought that was a made-up word. Deceivableness. <laughs> deceivableness. Look, who's coming? Satan is coming with all deceivableness. That's my new word. Stop your deceivableness! With your feathers coming from the ceiling. <laughs> of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they received not the love of truth. You see that? They didn't love the truth. They loved entertainment. They loved signs and wonders. Look, if you want to see signs and wonders, go to the 4th of July and shoot off some fireworks. And then come back to the house of God. For the Word of God. And look at what it says. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What sets us free? The truth. The truth sets us free. Signs and wonders don't set you free. You could be entertained out of your ears and still not get free. It says, For this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, this is interesting. It's saying God will send them a strong delusion. In other words, when they don't love the truth and they don't love God, God said, I'll give you what you're looking for. I'll give you over to a reprobate mind so that you will see deception. Why? Because their hearts are not really for God. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That all might be damned who believe not in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. When we realize Jesus is the only way to heaven, When we realize Jesus is the only way to heaven, we will not leave Him. Will you also go away? No. I'm not going to Buddha. I'm not going to Muhammad. I'm not going to Joseph Smith. I'm sticking with Jesus. Amen. Amen? The only way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Jesus. He's the only way. Will you also go away? No. John 6, 6, 6. Has anyone ever heard that number before? John 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Is that a coincidence, that number 6, 6, 6? When the people left Jesus and they went away? Look at what it says. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That tells me that there are going to be people that come to church, that interact with the Holy Spirit, that interact with Jesus and the Word of God and the truth, and that in spite of that, they will still walk away for endless reasons. I only need one reason to stay. Salvation. Amen. Amen. It says, Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? And this is where the title of the sermon comes from. Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Chuck E. Cheese Fun Camp? No. To the bar? Been there. To the strip club? Been there too. 
He said, Whom shall we go? Thou hast words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. God's love gives us a chance to repent and get right back to God's will. Amen. This is the mercy. This is the justice. This is the grace of God. God's love gives us a chance to repent. You, there are going to be people that they do go away. They fall away. They backslide. Whatever. They go away. But that doesn't mean that they can't repent and get right with God. As long as they have breath in their lungs, it is not too late to repent. The thief on the cross repented at the last moment of his life. But I encourage you not to wait that long because you might not get that chance. Some people die before they know. Some people die without a warning. God's love gives us a chance to repent and get right back to God's will. And Jonah 3.1. Remember we started off with Jonah? And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Isn't that gracious of God that he disobeyed the first time, but God didn't give up on him? He gave him another chance. He gave him the word of God a second time. How many have ever heard from God and you knew God told you to do something, but you didn't do it? And you paused and you delayed and you disobeyed God and you waited and then that opportunity to do it closed. But then God reappeared, spoke to you a second time, gave you another opportunity to get it right. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh and that city and preach unto it, preaching that I bid, preaching that I bid thee, and Jonah arose, arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. See, you see, it wasn't convenient for Jonah to obey God. He had to go three days. They didn't have Cadillacs back then. They didn't have RTA. He had to sacrifice to obey God. Some people quit on God when it's inconvenient. It was an exceeding great city and three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. journey and he cried and said, Yet yeah, forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Nothing in the world compares to God's love for us. Amen. Nothing else. Nothing else. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 32, it says, For who is God save the Lord? Who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me up upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that the bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me a shield of thy salvation and thy gentleness hath made me great. Psalms 1.1 and I'm closing with this scripture here. Blessed is the man that walketh not and the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but he delighteth in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff, which the wind driveth away. Will you also go away? And let the church say, No way! Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and
recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Old Brooklyn Christian Church.